between all the pyramids of ancient Egypt, the largest and oldest of them, are something else than burial sites of megalomaniac rulers who would have wanted to be put to rest inside the biggest graves in the history of the world. To give them some justice, the rulers of ancient Egypt spent considerable efforts to protect and conserve the pyramids. The ones which today are distinguished by remaining as solid structures, plain and simple, and without any art ornaments. In all honesty, we don't know who built the ancient pyramids or how old they are. This simply is a science of guessing most probable answer while dealing with a set of accessible data. We might be much better at guessing what functions the pyramids were meant to perform. It is quite clear that those ancient monuments were sabotaged in the past to prevent their technological usefulness. But we can observe enough detail so to come to far-reaching conclusions. The early pyramids were meant to be technological devices. It is all about unseen yet plentiful resource. The Earth's gravity field is a constant flow of energy. Magnetic waves coexist with the potential of corresponding, oriented perpendicularly, electrical waves. Both are scalar waves which can be manipulated with resonance. The oldest Egyptian pyramids were the most environmentally friendly devices utilizing pure gravitational forces of nature and naturally induced resonance for a range of tasks. This technology could be used for wireless energy mining, as it was inside the Great Pyramid in Giza. It could be used to create temporary anti-gravity fields, as realized in the Temple of Sun in Uzera. Some info on the subject is available at my channel. It appears that technology manipulating gravitation with the help of resonance may also be used for weather modification, and this can be observed in Dashur, modern Egypt. In ancient times, the area around Dashur was overflowing with water. It was a full of lakes, very wet place. Only one of those lakes survived till recent times, but it was emptied a decade ago because of the local authorities being afraid of spread of avian flu by the migratory birds. The show area being wet in ancient times is not coincidental, and the reason for it will be discovered here shortly. Between original 11 pyramids at the show, only 5 are remaining, and as it seems, 2 of them possess some technological abilities. These are the Red Pyramid, and positioned about 2 kilometers down south, the Bent Pyramid. Both pyramids were designed to serve a region's weather modification system. Modern non-military weather modification is most of all about controlling the rainfall. Chemical cloud seeding can lead to enhanced precipitation. Silver iodide and possibly some other materials are sprayed onto clouds for this purpose. There also exist methods of zapping the atmosphere with electricity to create similar effect. The aim of such operations is to increase rain in a certain area or clear the rain through clouds seeding over another area upwind. The success of modern weather modification depends on the amount of vapor already present in the atmosphere. However, what we can see in the traces of technology present in the Shores pyramids is something totally different. There we can find technology that manipulates natural Earth's gravity through the use of naturally created resonance. Pure, clean and presumably most efficient methods which don't leave behind any environmental damage. Instead of utilizing only existing vapor, the Shores technology attempted to induce a water creation process from its very beginning. While looking at the Red Pyramid, it would be difficult to see a water molecule, drop of water or rain. But it is exactly what it represents. A Red Pyramid was erected specifically for the purpose of creating water. Between the three chambers inside the pyramid, two of them were meant to store hydrogen, and the one above them was designed to hold oxygen. 
the walls of hydrogen chambers bear marks of discoloration, as if an effect of some chemical reactions. The space inside red pyramid differs from space inside the other pyramids because of the presence of a strange smell. People visiting the pyramid frequently report about presence of distinctive smell very close to the smell of ammonia. It's acceptable to assume that Chambers' stone walls weathering released some nitrogen, which in turn reacted with hydrogen to create this millennia-old lingering smell of ammonia-like gases. The Red Pyramid was to create atmospheric resonant conditions supporting creation process and sustained presence of water. Water should not necessarily be created just because there are some hydrogen and oxygen atoms available. Some specific conditions would be needed, which in this case depended on environment's resonance. The Red Pyramid was to pulsate with natural frequency of water to create atmospheric resonance of the same frequency value. Presence of hydrogen and oxygen inside the chambers alone wouldn't have much atmospheric effect outside of the pyramid, if not for the chambers' characteristic corbel vaulted ceilings. Far from being a decorative fixture, those were designed to create a resonance strong enough to set the chambers and then pyramid into a specific vibrational frequency. It has to do with gravity acceleration. Because of a corbel vaulted ceiling, gravity inside the chamber starts its downwards travel from different ceiling heights and hits the chamber floor at different speeds. This creates flow and the chamber's resonance dependent on the exact shape of the corbel ceiling. All the corbels you can find inside the pyramids have the same purpose, which is creating resonance on the smooth floors beneath them. During this process, resonance created by the cobalt ceilings becomes an amplification and a transport method for the natural frequencies of hydrogen present inside two chambers and oxygen in the upper chamber. As a result, the smooth pyramids' walls were to vibrate with summarized frequency of the chambers, which transported natural frequency of water, what in turn should create a resonant effect in atmosphere. This exactly is how Red Pyramid had been creating rain. All the oldest Egyptian pyramids were sabotaged. The flow inside oxygen chamber of the Red Pyramid has been completely ripped off. We often hear stories about the pyramid robbers who damage the flow looking for hidden treasures. But a simple truth is that without smooth chambers flow, there wouldn't be any suitable chambers resonance necessary for the Red Pyramid to perform its function. We can see that the Red Pyramid's system should be helpful with producing from a scratch and sustain atmospheric waters, but it's hard to proclaim how it would help with better condensation leading to cloud formation and precipitation. At present, earthly atmosphere contains only well below 1% of hydrogen. If ancient atmosphere had similar composition, even while utilizing all the available atmospheric hydrogen, not so much extra rain would be produced. Some questions may remain regarding feasibility of this project, which could be answered while discussing the role of the Bent Pyramid, located two kilometers south from the Red Pyramid. In short, this pyramid was constructed to create an effect opposite to what the Red Pyramid was doing. It was made to stop the rain by the way of extracting hydrogen from atmospheric water. Although we cannot be sure if the main reason for Bent Pyramid was to stop the rain, or was it to produce enough hydrogen for the Red Pyramid, so it could create a lot of atmospheric water at once. 
this possibly could provide some answers to the questions regarding efficient condensation and precipitation. We should be aware that the pyramids were designed in most simplistic way. It is almost like someone would have wanted to leave for us a set of elementary instructions describing what can be done with the help of gravitonic technology. Having said that, design of the bent pyramid seems to be the most complicated project between all the pyramids of ancient Egypt. Decoding the bent pyramid may occasionally bring more questions than answers. It is not as straightforward as the case of the Red Pyramid, where things quickly become pretty much self-explanatory. The Bent Pyramid seems to be a victim of conservation jobs performed in distant past by some people who either didn't know about or who just wanted to conceal its true purpose. Because of it, sometimes assumptions have to be made in order to decode some of the methods employed in this pyramid. And then there is absence of proper measurements of cobalt spaces inside the pyramid. These are required to fully understand the ways of internal resonant communications between pyramids' gravitonic systems. At the moment, it seems impossible to produce a full standalone theory about complete bent pyramid processing cycle, but we can find enough details to know what it was to do and understand its main methods. While decoding the bent pyramid function, we should discover that, uh, contrary to popular opinion, there were no mistakes or changes made during its construction. Uh, from the very beginning, the bent pyramid was uh, planned to be as we can see it now. The characteristic bent shape of the pyramid was to resonantly seek placement for diatomic hydrogen, which naturally exists in the atmosphere as pairs of atoms. Satellite pyramid with its own resonating chamber was setting a stage for a single electron, which each hydrogen atom keeps in its orbit. Interestingly, while we can see duly angled walls, there is only one satellite pyramid which create resonant condition separately for each angle of the bent pyramid's walls. If the pyramid had resonant chambers storing hydrogen, using techniques employed in red pyramid, then it wouldn't be able to change atmosphere's composition. It would only support hydrogen already present in the air. Instead, there are two systems inside the bent pyramid designed to decompose atmospheric water molecules so to obtain pure hydrogen. Those two systems are connected with a narrow central room placed under the pyramid's apex, which usually is called a chimney. One of them starts with the entrance at the northern side of the pyramid, the other is accessible from the western side. For simplicity's sake, I will name them the northern and western systems. Although it seems unlikely at the first glance, the chimney positioned along the axis of the pyramid is a central resonating chamber. It seems to be created to collect internal pyramids' works into a single device. Within uh, both northern and western systems, we find a single resonating chamber. Uh, these are typical corbel vaulted chambers, similar to the chambers we've seen inside the Red Pyramid. There is no ammonia-like smell inside the Bent Pyramid, and we can assume the role of the chambers was to store oxygen. This is where similarity with Red Pyramid ends. Inside the Red Pyramid, the chambers were providing a way of transport for natural resonant properties of hydrogen and oxygen. The bent pyramid chambers were created to transport deteriorating properties of oxygen. It was done in most simplistic way with beams made of wood installed across the chamber to disrupt its resonant works. Both chambers inside the bent pyramid were constructed for the same purpose. Both have holes allowing installation of beams 
with some of them remaining in place until present day. The purpose was to disrupt resonant walks of the chamber and at the same time decay resonant properties of oxygen next transported by broken chambers resonance to pyramid walls and then into the environment. In the effect, atmospheric waters were exposed to vibrations weakening resonant bonds of the molecule and creating conditions suitable for water disintegration. There are two deep shafts inside the bent pyramid filled with rough rocks, bedrock pieces and soft mortar. Those who studied pyramids know very well that technology capable of joining huge stone blocks with perfection disallowing insertion of a sheet of paper between them wouldn't employ such an awkward method. It's relatively easy to suspect that the shafts were filled up sometime after pyramid construction, maybe to conceal the function. One of those shafts is a vital part of another water disintegration device, placed inside a 20 meters long horizontal corridor of the western system. Its boundaries are defined by two portcullis blocks housed in spaces roofed with cobalt ceilings. It's a marvel of gravitonic ingenuity. Two identical portcullis blocks were exposed to identical resonance created by two identical cobalt roofs. This is a classic recipe for the creation of resonant coupling. It creates a standing scalar wave which travels back and forth between identical resonances. Scalar wave traveling between two portcullis blocks should have ability of carrying information. On the quick side note, the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three scientists who are said to have entangled the quantum entanglement. Alan Aspect, John F. Closer and Anton Seilinger. There are no hidden variables, no hidden factors which Albert Einstein sought to explain the so-called spooky interaction at a distance. Photons placed across vast distances of the universe might affect one another. A change of state in one particle may cause identical change in another with the speed seriously threatening a key principle of special relativity, the fact that nothing can travel faster than light. There is a new understanding of quantum mechanics coming around, which is set to dictate technology of the future world. Resonant coupling device inside the bent pyramid is an example of quantum entanglement, though in this case at a very short distance. Instead of photons, we are dealing with portcullis blocks, while seeking the role of elusive and not discovered as yet graviton. Those who don't like it may name it gravity, or better yet, processed gravity. In order for resonant coupling to convey information, it should be applied at one of the resonant ends of the coupling. But in case of bent a pyramid device, the information was applied sideways, underneath the resonant coupling. Over two and a half meters long and four meters deep shaft was filled with water. While utilizing magnetic nature of resonant coupling, it acted as some sort of gravitational antenna containing water information, which was set to constantly interfere, mixed up with scalar waves traveling between identical resonances. This way, resonant coupling between portcullis blocks was carrying water properties information. With all the simplicity of ingenious ancient builders, this water information was then to be constantly decomposed by the set of wooden beams installed with five pairs of holes on the walls of the corridor in the area preceding the water-filled shaft. The whole idea is rather simple. All we need is to know about attributes of resonant coupling and about wood being an agent capable of resonance suppression. It is very interesting, though, if modern engineering could duplicate such a device. Some questions should be asked. 
if resonant coupling device within a Western system was powerful enough to have desired effect on a bent pyramid walls. The cobalt roofing in Port Collis blocks housing spaces would generate resonance much weaker than large resonating chambers. It is quite possible that the device would be somehow resonantly connected with the central resonating chamber named the chimney. To find out if that's the case, we would need to know exact measurements of cobalt spaces in both resonant coupling device and in the chimney. The rule here is that identical cobalts would create identical resonance needed for wireless connection. Within the northern system, its oxygen chamber has been physically connected with the chimney. The northern system connects with it in dual way. There is a small passage named a window separated by a lint stone from a larger passage below. On the floor of the larger passage, there is a very deep shaft, presumably originally filled with water. The top passage connects chimney with oxygen chamber, keeping up with some of the chamber's resonant properties. We can see cobalt shapes inside both windows and chimney, staying in line with chamber's cobalt. On the chimney walls, apart from some other cobalt, we can observe two cobalt niches. There seems to be no other purpose for their existence but resonant coupling connectors. There used to be two stone blocks placed on the floors of the niches. For those familiar with the subject, it should be quite obvious that the stone blocks were placed inside the niches to prevent their functioning as resonators. It is a known fact that one resonant coupling may affect another. For example, in 1998, Anton Seilinger entangled two particles that don't directly interact by using entangled partner particles. Hopefully, sometime in the future, we will gain exact knowledge of the cobalt's measurements so this mystery may be solved. It makes all sense for the chimney to act as one not only with physically connected northern system, but also with wirelessly connected western system. The chimney would then act as a central resonating device, making bent pyramid walls vibrate with summarized water molecule decomposition information. Possessing basic understanding of quantum technology implemented in some of the Egyptian pyramids, should we be afraid of the unknown? Perhaps we could answer to this with another question. How would you define the power which built these devices and left for us a practical set of basic instructions demonstrating how this quantum technology may be utilized? Most of all, however, we need to be aware that quantum technology has been employed for already many decades in mind control operations. In this case, it's been called electromagnetic radiation or longitudinal waves, but in practice it uses the same physics principium as observed in pyramids. Resonant coupling, or call it quantum entanglement, is capable of transporting detailed biological information. For this reason, we need to become cautious and strive to provide systems with which resonant frequencies would be governed by scientists and engineers friendly towards human causes, and not by clandestine operations or some religion. For time being, quantum entanglement has been placed at the fringes of science, but traces of technology dated many millennia back show that it needs to be at the very base of it. It is where the next stage of scientific and technological evolution begins. Conquering all the obstacles, we need to get there in order to further the search for our purpose in the universe. Thank you for watching and good luck!